So welcome everybody to the Wasiliana Hub Effective Mediator Masterclass. We have we hold this masterclass once a month, and uh, you are welcome. We today are going to be dealing with uh, forgiveness in a mediation session. Um, today is 18th of November, 2021. And we shall begin with our national anthem in Kiswahili. Medita um, Waroi will take us through that. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, let's see our, see our first dance. Emugu Guvuyetu, Irete Baraka Kwetu, Iwe Hak Iwe Gao Namlinzi, Natukai Naudugu. Amani na uhuru, raha tupate na ustawi. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so, so today we are dealing with forgiveness in uh, mediation and how that forgiveness helps. So we will start by just learning what is forgiveness. And in order for us to understand this, I thought we would best start with knowing what forgiveness is not. So forgiveness does not mean forgetting. It does not mean condoning or excusing offenses. And also when you forgive, you do not gloss over or deny the seriousness of an offense. So usually we forgive like it's such an easy thing, but that is not forgiveness. Um, psychologists divide, define forgiveness as a conscious, this, uh, a conscious decision to release feelings of resentment or vengeance toward a person or group who has harmed you regardless of whether they actually deserve the forgiveness or not. And so therefore we can summarize what forgiveness is as forgiveness is not forgetting or condoning the harm that has been done. Instead, it is letting go of the need to revenge and releasing thoughts of bitterness and resentment. Uh, what is the importance or what are the benefits of forgiveness? Forgiveness reduces negative feelings such as depression, anger, hostility, stress, and distress. Forgiveness also brings peace of mind and frees one from corrosive anger. It can uh, increase the levels of happiness, satisfaction, and compassion. Forgiveness also provides freedom. People who do not forgive are often trapped in a storm of negative emotions um, and may devote their lives avenging their heart. Forgiveness can provide freedom from an endless pursuit of revenge. So forgiveness would make us have a, a life that is happy. It also heals individuals. When, when we forgive, it is not always necessary to tell the other person about it. In this way, forgiveness can be solely for healing and empowerment of the injured person. Forgiveness can also heal relationships. Sometimes the person who has committed the offense is an important or irreplaceable loved one. In case in cases where the injured individual wants to preserve their relationship, forgiveness may be the path towards this. So the benefits of forgiveness can be summarized as uh, you will have a healthier relationships, improved mental health, less anxiety, stress and hostility, lower blood pressure, fewer symptoms of depression, a stronger immune system, improved heart health and improved self-esteem. So if we are looking for healthier life, mental health, forgiveness is core. Why hold a grudge? Because grudges are some of the things that 
cause us to have, uh, to, not to forgive. So why hold a grudge? When hurt by someone, particularly someone you love and trust, this can cause anger, sadness, and confusion. So you will hold the grudge because this is somebody you love and trust and they have hurt you. Uh, we hold a grudge because we dwell on the hurtful events uh, that grudges filled with resentment, vengeance, and hostility. And so that takes root. We also allow negative feelings to crowd out positive feelings and we can be overwhelmed by our bitterness or sense of injustice. Then we are also stuck in the circle of holding grudges because we expect something from someone and that expectation has not been fulfilled or may never be fulfilled. So that is why we may be holding grudges. Um, grudges have effects. If we hold on to grudges, there are effects. And one, it ensnares us in anger and makes you prone to persistent rumination rather than moving forward with your life. So you just get stuck in anger. And essentially a grudge inhibits your ability to cope with or resolve your issues and keeps you stuck in the past. You are trapped in an unpleasant event or interaction that causes your distress. So you, you remain in a place where somebody hurt you, maybe said a, said a word that you didn't like, maybe they stole from you. You are stuck in that past and not moving forward to try and go past whatever it is that they did. Then we are, fixate, uh, we are fixated sometimes on negative emotions rather than resolving them. And this is also harmful and can even make an unpleasant demeanor and substantially erode one's well-being. So we just remain focused when we are fixated. It means we are not moving from that negative emotion that we have regarding a person or regarding what was done to us. Um, what are the effects of holding a grudge? We continue to see that the effects of holding a grudge, uh, it's, it brings anger and bitterness into every relationship and new experience. So it will bring this anger, not only to that one relationship, but you can carry the anger to other relationships. Uh, then we, we are also wrapped up in the wrong that you cannot enjoy the present. So I was wronged. This is where I am. Uh, I was slapped maybe by my spouse. I will not move from here. And so I cannot even enjoy the children. Uh, my, my boss maybe did not give me an opportunity to, um, to do what I wanted. So instead of enjoying the work that I, I uh, have been given, I'll just go on brooding where I am. So I'm wrapped up in that wrong. Then we become depressed or anxious. Uh, we feel uh, that your life lacks meaning or purpose or that you are at odds with your spiritual beliefs. Uh, if we are Christians, you're wondering, why can't I forgive? What is God thinking of me? Uh, and I believe that happens also in many other religions. Then loss of valuable and enriching uh, connectedness with others. You, you will be upset with one person. You will be holding a grudge with one person. And you may not move on to connect with others within that group because this person is there. Why should I go there? He, he has annoyed me. She has upset me. Why should I go to the group where she is? So I'll not have any connectedness with these people, with other people. Um, wow. So.
So how do we reach a state of forgiveness? Forgiveness is a commitment to a personalized process of change. It is when we commit <coughs> that it is me and I need that change. Then we have to move from suffering to forgiveness. It is a decision that one has to make knowing it is me who is going to enjoy thereafter. So we, we, we must recognize the value of forgiveness and how it can improve our life. That forgiveness will enable me to have freedom. Forgiveness will enable me to interact with everybody in a, in a, a proper way. Then we have to identify what needs healing and who needs to be forgiven and for what. Because when we need to forgive, it is not um, a general forgiveness. It has to be specific. You hurt me, I'm feeling sad and I'm annoyed and I get angry at these things. I don't like what you did. So it is a specific thing that we are asking. We are forgiving. It is not general. We realize that you are the only person responsible for your own feelings and for healing the heart that is going on inside you. Nobody else can ever help because they will not even understand. So you are responsible for what you're feeling and you're responsible for healing the heart that you are going through. Uh, the other thing is to acknowledge our emotions about the harm done to us and how they affect our behavior and the work to release them. So we must acknowledge the emotions. And that's when I, I was talking about, you must say, I'm angry, I'm sad, I'm bitter, uh, whatever it is that you're feeling. So acknowledge the heart. Who hurt you and why did they do that? Those are some of the things you're going to be looking at. What is the context? What brought that anger? What brought that hurt? It could have been maybe that in, a, in an office, uh, you employed an accountant and you had agreed with the accountant that um, they will be there for a year. Halfway down the line, they just leave. And they leave, not only do they leave, they leave at a time when you really need them. So there's a conflict. And this is somebody you know, you were helping them, they had lost their job, so what was the context? What, what did they do to you? And then how long did this happen? How long did this happen? Consider the negative feelings you have acquired since the incident. Because you may have felt sad, but is there something else? Are you devastated now? Are you overwhelmed? Are you feeling depressed? So consider what it is that you have acquired after that incident, then see this situation as an opportunity for healing and for growth. See that the other person has revealed to you through their action where there was a wound spot in you, a wounded spot in you, which needed healing. So it is a time of growth and it's also a, an opportunity to heal. And you may have a chance to heal many other situations and to forgive many other people with one opportunity that you find. Then accept that you cannot change the past, no matter how much you wish this pain could be reversed. reversed. Admit that your anger toward the person will not redeem what, you have, what they have done. So the past is gone. Yes, it happened, but you cannot change. We cannot go back there and say, now, don't call me names. It was already done. The names were already called. It was already done. The job, I already left it without the permission of the boss. It was already done. So it is nothing that I can change. And then admit that your anger toward the person will not redeem what they have done. So whether, whether I'm angry or not, the situation will not change. Then choose to forgive the person who has offended you. It's a choice you make. Just choose that I will forgive this person. Then move away 
uh, from your role as a victim and release the control and power the offending person and situation have had in your life. So don't remain there as, as a victim. It was done to me. It is me who was hurt. There's nothing I can do. The person really hurt me. So you remain as a victim. Release yourself from that. Be willing to, to do and learn whatever it takes to forgive. There is a lot of training that you can go off for, to. You can, uh, like uh, I've listed here, you can commit to do the process, to write journals, to see therapists, to do trainings, or you can do whatever, whatever it will cost, um, whatever it takes to heal the wound that was in So you have to be uh, willing by yourself to do what is necessary for you. Um, the question, the question we ask here is when we go to mediation, because forgiveness can work in mediation. So the question we ask here is, is it possible to bring the aspect of forgiveness into a mediation session? Because somebody would say, Maybe it is not possible. How do you uh, bring uh, forgiveness where people are struggling over land, fighting over non-payment of uh, probably goods that were delivered? Can forgiveness work in mediation? And um, what we realize is that forgiveness is the essence of any conflict resolution through mediation. Because the aim of any good mediation is to reach a point that the people in conflict are negotiating on their own. So if there's forgiveness, then these people can negotiate. They can sit on a table and they can negotiate on their own. They are supposed to reach a win-win agreement. That is the core for mediation, to have a win-win agreement. This means that each person is to give away something for them to meet in the middle so that they have a win-win situation. And this is where forgiveness then comes in. Um, Okay. In mediation, we should uh, note that a simple apology may not work. A simple apology may not work. Just saying, oh, I'm sorry, everything is okay. That will not work. When clients come into the, med uh, data, to the mediator, trust and reliability will be established if the offender realizes they have made a mistake. So we need to build trust and we need to build reliability. Forgiveness is uh, closely related to this realization and acknowledgement of guilt. Because for you to ask for forgiveness, you must realize that I have made a mistake if you are the offender. I am wrong and so I can, um, I can ask for forgiveness. And, and we see this also again in the, the case I was mentioning of somebody having employed their friend and they know that this friend is going to be with them for a while and then the friend leaves and leaves at a, at a situation where it is not possible and they had an agreement so I've been offended by this person and it can not work. But for them to be in the mediation, one of them has to realize their mistake. And so with that realization, then they can sit on the table. Forgiveness will also open the psychological readiness to a continuous negotiation and or solution to a conflict. And that's, that's, um, that's the same as this accountant. If they come in and they realize that they offended their boss, then 
they can ask for forgiveness and then negotiations can go on and a solution can easily be reached. Um, in mediation, just like in any other conflict, one needs to recognize that forgiveness is for you, not only the offender. It is best to do it now as you go into mediation. It's best to do it now. Uh, maybe I just clarify, when I say forgiveness is for you, it's, it's for your well-being. It's for you to be able to negotiate on the table well. So when the forgiveness is there, when you ask for forgiveness or when you are forgiven, it is really for you. It's a personal thing that you need to have before you can move on. It is about freeing yourself. Forgiving, some, uh, forgiving someone does not mean you have to like them. It's about me and my feelings. It's about me and the stress I'm going through. It's about you and, and the sadness that you feel, the anger you feel when you see these people. So you don't have to like the person, but you can forgive them. And that after forgiving them, you will be free right from the inside. And um, mediators need to note that forgiveness is particularly useful when parties are preparing for mediation. This is more possible when it is um, when it's a private practice, not when it is a court uh, mediation, because you can then receive the clients and speak to them and understand their problems and then uh, give them an opportunity to forgive one another. This may not work very well with the court annex mediation because uh, of the short time that we are given. It's only, I think, 60 days, and uh, you're supposed to go back, and this will not be easy. Yet it's worth trying, because we have the ability to try. So it is worth trying even in that case. Um, the best place to introduce forgiveness is in a caucus. And a caucus for those who may not be uh, mediators or those who may not be aware or are still training, focus is when you meet um, the groups separately, the clients separately. So you meet one client and then you meet another. So in that small group, that's the best place to introduce a caucus. Uh, find out what, what feelings the clients have. Are they having any issues? What, what are you seeing? Are you finding that they are angry, that they are bitter? Are you finding that uh, they are sad, they are into depression? What is it that you can find from this client as you speak to them? Then um, speak to them about letting go of some of those feelings. Tell them the importance of forgiveness. Tell them um, how they would be able to uh, come together with the other client, with the person who is the offender or the other person who has been offended. Um, tell, tell them, speak to them about letting go of some of those feelings. Um, use the steps that lead to forgiveness to bring them. We have seen the steps before, in some slides before. So use those steps to bring them to realization that it is important to forgive and then go to the negotiation table. And you'll be telling them that if they forgive one another, they will go to the negotiation table or to the mediation table to speak for themselves, to come to an agreement that both of them are happy with, and, and so that it will also be quick and uh, the agreement will come out much faster. Um, you can refer the clients to a specialist because not all of us are well trained. Uh, in this area, you can refer them to a specialist. And I know that in Kenya, the Positive Psychology Association of Kenya is a place that you can seek uh, that sort of support and that sort of help. So you can always ask, call them or uh, get to find out where they are and they will be able to help you to deal with that client. 
Um, I know as Wasiriana Hub, we, we keep talking about multidisciplinary uh, a, a group that works together, but it is not only a mediator. The mediator would be working, the psychologist would be working, uh, positive psychology now comes in, uh, the police, so everybody comes in. You have to have people you can work with in order to help your client. Uh, elements of forgiveness in mediation. While applying elements uh, or components of forgiveness in mediation practice, we can change the way we work. Conflict is unlikely to evaporate um, anytime soon. So nobody has to worry that there will be no disputes that work will end. It will always be there. And, but we have to know that there's, there are components for forgiveness. So with a forgiveness-infused approach to conflict resolution, clients are likely to achieve better results and be happier with their lawyers uh, or with whoever it is that is representing them. Because once they are allowed to come to a place of forgiveness, then they will get better results. So um, forgiveness is always possible regardless of the gravity of the wrong. It does not matter what has happened. Um, a person must choose to forgive and cannot ever be forced to do so also. So we as mediators can set the tone of our work and not allow our clients to set the tone for us. When I say that, I mean it is us who know the importance of forgiveness. It's us who know the importance of letting go so that they can come to the table with the, with the possibility of discussing. So we need to set that tone for our work as mediators so that we can transform the mediation sessions or the mediation, the, the mediation uh, profession. We can also be ambassadors of peace and healing regardless of what, what's going on around us. So we must remove um, we, we must remove the ego from our work to think that, oh, it is only us or it is only somebody else. We must remove that and focus on being of service. That may, it may be difficult, but that is the key. And this is fundamental, a very fundamental paradigm change. There are different kinds of forgiveness. In mediation, there are two kinds of forgiveness there is the bilateral forgiveness. When we talk about the bilateral forgiveness, this occurs when one person forgives another in exchange for an apology or, or, um, or other act of contrition. Uh, there is at least in, uh, in the city, it's called a quid pro quo, a good or service, a good or service has been exchanged for something of equal value. I will go back to the, the accountant that has been employed by a friend. And here they are. They need to now come to the table. So they agree and they say, OK, I know you wronged me. I know that you left when I needed you. And uh, I'm sorry about it. However, I don't have the half a million. And maybe we can agree on something. So the the the, the offended person would say, I can only accept your sorry if you come back because you are not yet working, if you come back and you complete what you are doing for me. I do not need to employ somebody else and I had already paid you for that work. I will truly accept that apology. That is a bilateral forgiveness. So if you apologize and show sufficient remorse, I will forgive you. That's another way of doing it. So. There's the goods or the service that, that would come in for bilateral. So this kind of forgiveness is uh, good if there is going to be a future relationship between the parties. It is a prerequisite for reconciliation. There's the unilateral forgiveness. Unilateral forgiveness is uh, forgiveness undertaken solely for one's own benefit. Like I said, for me, I want to feel at peace I want to find that uh, place of happiness and of joy 
So I will um, I'll forgive. So participation of the offender is not required. Here it is the offended that will say it is okay, let me forgive, let me move on. There are no prerequisites or conditions. Um, it enables those who have experienced injury to free themselves of anger, blame, resentment whenever they are ready to do so. Uh, clients will benefit from using forgiveness even uh, at the end of a lawsuit to achieve closure. So somebody may have sued another, but uh, they, they have won the case or, or whatever, the other one has lost. And if they live in that way, they may not have a closure. So if they leave the case, they can still go on and uh, have a closure by forgiveness, by talking together and forgiving one another. We realize that without emotional healing and forgiveness, even when the case is settled in mediation, parties are often left with more hostility and mistrust than they began. That the parties will not be happy. They'll still be talking about maybe I was uh, shortchanged and, because there hasn't been any forgiveness. Forgiveness can be applied in virtually any dispute. I think I'd mentioned that before. This is obvious advantage when uh, a significant uh, personal relationship is at stake. A business partner, a spouse, neighbors, sisters, brothers, uh, forgiveness can be applied in incest, rape, murder cases, accidents where somebody has knocked a brother or your sister or somebody and has died, negligence by doctors. So it is forgiveness is for everything, virtually any dispute that there is. It does not select. So relevance of forgiveness in mediation. In mediation, depending on the type of case, the process of forgiveness can need patience. It is a skill that um, we as mediators need to learn. Forgiveness in mediation is one of the tools towards conflict transformation. And I said it's a, a, you, can, you can learn the skill because there are people who have trained as uh, forgiveness coaches. There are people who have done their they are learning pieces and everything in, uh, in uh, forgiveness. And, and so you can seek them and you can find them and you can learn that. So for mediators, this is a, a tool that we cannot afford to ignore. Thank you very much for listening. Um, this was the November lead summit and I'm going to um, call in for any questions before we end. Thank you. Thank you, Patricia. Yeah, uh, you're hearing uh, what? Yeah, I yes, have seen yes. some, I have seen that there are some questions that have been put in the chat. Uh, and, and maybe this is the time that you'd like to to try and uh, you know answer them mm. as much as can. Yeah. One of the questions is uh, that has been put in the chat. Let, let me just go back to the chat. Yeah. One of the questions is uh, uh, whether we have ever experienced forgiveness in mediation. That, that is a question that has been asked. And uh, maybe just to uh, to talk about it in a, a while, it is possible in uh, in our uh, in our ex experience in uh, in mediation that uh, we have, or I have as a person experience forgiveness in mediation, where I, I was dealing with uh, uh, with a family, a daughter in law and a father in law. Uh, who had issues with the, with, with the lad and how they were supposed to, the father in law uh, wanted to subdivide the piece of land. Uh, it took a while uh, because, because the first time they could not see eye to eye. Uh, and our first met session was the first time that they met in a long time. Uh, however, after 
having the caucus and talking about it, uh, you could see that the, 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 the daughter-in-law was in a lot of pain. But as you have uh, talked to us about uh, forgiveness and how it helps and how it eases and how it can lessen pain, after giving them time to go and think about it, yeah, uh, they came back the second, the second session and you could, you could see that that burden that the daughter-in-law had had lessened. And after we were through with the, with the mediation, it was interesting because she was able to embrace the father-in-law. I made sobs of tears. You could see that, that even if they, they came to a, 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 con, a consensus of what they wanted to achieve, uh, both the parties, you could see that um, the forgiveness or she, she actually uttered that she has forgiven the father-in-law and you could see and you could feel that it was from deep down her heart. So that was one of the experience uh, that I had uh, in mediation and I can say that uh, forgiveness worked and it made uh, that mediation session or that mediation process be very easy. Uh, I made that it had taken uh, years and years before they could solve it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank, thank you, thank you, Mediator Catherine. There, there are some comments and some more questions as well. Maybe I can read um, one or two of them. Um, I think you've answered the one of the experience of the mediation very well. Forgiveness is paramount in mediation for purposes of creating lasting relationships, even after the solution of dispute. Thank you for that comment. This is a great topic. It is at the core of mediation. Um, I know, I know uh, Mediator Catherine has answered about the forgiveness, but I also have an experience of unforgiveness where uh, two people came, they had an issue with a vehicle, and one of them said, I am really sorry, this is what you thought, I didn't mean to, to take your car, but since I have it, can I just bring it back to you and I'll, I'll pay you plus interest? But one of them could not, could not accept. They just totally refused uh, and, and said they would not be able to, to accept anything apart from uh, the full payment of the car. So there's also unforgiveness in that matter. Um, the, the other comment is it creates peace and harmony, and indeed it does. Uh, it does create peace and harmony. It's very relevant. Thus is uh, the ultimate goal. This is the ultimate goal of uh, mediation. Uh, guiding the parties to forgive each other despite their differences and reconcile. And we embrace forgiveness as a key in order for parties to move. Um, yeah. And... Um, Mediator Waroyo, would you be having Catherine? Would you be having any further questions? Maybe, if there are any, I, I would like to see if there are any. Uh, I, I think there is no no more. However, I, I would just like to echo. Uh, words by Martin Luther King Jr., who said that uh, forgiveness actually it is not a one-off act. It is a plus. It, it is an attitude. It is a change of attitude. So as as much as long as we are we are living, as long as we interacting, as long as we have people that we live together, uh, we need to have forgiveness. We have to live that forgiveness. It is an attitude, according to Martin Luther King. 
it is also important to to understand and actually embrace uh, the fact that mediation uh, forgiveness is a process it is not a one day event it is not a one 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 day or one you know one session uh, thing but it is a process it, it takes long it can take some um because as we all know for somebody to be able to forgive forgiveness can be intra personal it has got to come out emotionally as uh, mediator patricia has said it affects us emotionally and actually it can even be uh, detrimental if we are not able to forgive thank you thank you thank you very much mediator Catherine. uh this this has been the november lead in summit and it is the power of forgiveness in mediation session. This is a pre presentation from Wasiliana Hub, Effective Mediator Masterclass. The, medi the lead mediators, the lead uh, masterclass uh, leaders are uh, Catherine Waroyo, who is a mediator and a counseling psychologist, and Patricia H., myself, I'm also a counseling psychologist and a mediator. Uh, we want to thank you very much for having taken time to come and we appreciate. We, uh, this is a lead to the summit. The summit is tomorrow and um, Saturday and we are all welcome. Please look out for it. Uh, Wasiliana Hub really is a place for transformational mediation because doing mediation in the way that has been done before, uh, it, it is like it's today and it will always be the same. We need to transform and to transform mediation and to transform the clients who come into mediation. These are the people that we target so that mediation may have a face of people and not a face of parties, a face of uh, injured people and not a face of litigation where we are fighting with one another. There, there is a big difference that has to be brought in to the, into the market, into the mediation uh, um, profession. I'm not sure if, uh, Catherine, you have anything to comment about the transformation or whatever it is you feel about what Vasiliana have does. I would like you to comment before we go. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Medita Patricia. I think you have said it all. Uh, Wasiliana Hub has really brought us, Medita, in a, in a more experienced uh, form. As you have said, it is transformational. And as we enter into mediation, it is always uh, important that we understand, apart from seeing this person or apart from seeing this case scenario, Apart from getting this case that you have gotten from the court, there's a person behind it who has emotions, who has feelings, and who actually is encompassed by so much. So it is important what Wasiliana Hub is doing, trying to make the mediators who are in Wasiliana Hub understand a person holistically and understand uh, the issues of uh, what affects people in a holistic approach. So thank you, thank you so much, Wasiliana Hub, and thank you for empowering the mediators in this forum. Thank you so much, uh, Medita Patricia. So uh, we shall end as we usually do with the Wimbo Wataifa, the first stanza. Uh, Catherine. Thank you, uh, ready to go. E mungu guvu yetu. Ilete baraka kwetu, haki iwe gao na mlinzi, na tukae na udugu, amani na uhuru, raha tupate na ustawi. Thank, thank you very much. We shall have the next um, uh, masterclass in December. We shall let you know. Haribuni sana.
and we can leave at our, our own time.